What's up, guys? Kurt Hughes here with Ignite Baseball. Today we're looking at Julio Franco, a.k.a. the Ageless Wonder. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love about um, his swing is his back leg and the way that he um, utilizes it or doesn't utilize it in his swing. Um, I'll kind of explain what I mean by that in just a second. Um, notice how the shape of his body right now, if you drew a line from his foot to his head, on either side, both his front foot and his back foot, it kind of makes the shape of an A. So what he ends up doing is when he lifts his leg, he maintains the back side of that A and just rides his back leg forward. And when I said that he doesn't use his back leg, I didn't mean that it wasn't part of his swing. It certainly is. He is riding it forward for sure, but he's not pushing with it. The angle of the leg allows him to use gravity and kind of utilize that in order to make him go forward rather than pushing. If he was pushing, you would see his weight kind of stacked up on his back leg, and you'd see him driving, um, you know, his his hip forward. So his knee would kind of not be sliding with him. It would kind of like be behind. Um, and you'd see a lot of things like his head would move a ton, like when he's actually turning, if he's pushing the beginning. And it would just delay his turn overall. So he does pretty much a perfect job of using his back leg, which you know I'm a I'm a huge fan of. It's something that I teach a lot um, during my lessons. So his landing position is really really good as well. You can notice that his belt buckle is way open here, up the first baseline, and his chest is hidden here, and he's in his scap load right here. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit in a second, but basically he's pulling his elbow back kind of behind him. I'll show you another view of that in just a moment. Um, but yeah, so that belly button is open, chest is hidden. One thing that I think he could do a little bit better is get this front foot open a little bit more. So it was kind of more at the pitcher or at least like in fair territory. It is pretty closed right now. And I'm going to show you why that's kind of a problem in just a second. Notice how when he gets started, you'll see that foot roll right out. Um, because his turn is so violent and so good. Problem with that is, is that when you keep your foot closed like that, it puts a lot of stress on the outside of your knee. Your knee isn't designed to bend side to side. It's only supposed to go up and down. So it's just not good for your joints. Um, so, you know, laying, uh, landing with that front foot more open, it's just better for you overall from, uh, um, you know, for your body. Um, Another thing that I love about his swing is how much he brings his back foot up and forward and pulls it up under him. Notice how he has the majority of his weight on his back leg right now. He's kind of just balancing on it. He's operating kind of like a kickstand. I'll draw that for you. Boom. And he's just kind of balancing himself on that. The other thing that that angle of his knee to his head allows him to do. You'll notice it is leaning back a little bit. It allows him to swing up, which allows him to hit the ball up and allows him to actually hit, you know, the home runs. No one's ever hit a ground ball over the fence. So it's important that if you want to actually hit home runs that you do swing up. Um, so that's something that he does um, fantastically well. Lots of lots of really good stuff in the swing. I'm going to show you uh, another angle real quick. And then we'll move on to one, another swing that's in a different pitch location in a second. But um, show you the other angle first. So this is uh, front view. I'm just going to show you that scap load right there. You can see that elbow kind of show up behind him. So I can see it behind his back right there. That's that scap load. So he's pulling that elbow back and kind of sucking and sucking his like hand almost into his back shoulder which kind of connects um, his shoulder and his hand. So the movement of his shoulder and the movement of his hands are kind of like tied together early on, which allows him to really, really easily turn the barrel. You can notice right at the top there, the video quality isn't the best, but you can see how fast his barrel moves right away. As soon as you see that belt buckle right there, that barrel just takes off and he absolutely hits a moon ball. So I'll show you another one here, another swing of his that um, I like even better. I'm going to explain one more concept using it. Um, I really do like Franco's swing. It's fantastic. So it's going to be this swing, but it's a side view of the swing. 
Okay, cool. Um, so this is when he was with the Mets. Um, you're going to see a lot of the same stuff, but I'm going to use it to explain something totally different. Now you'll notice that this pitch is lower. So he's going down to hit this pitch a little bit more. And he side bends really, really well. Um, so a lot of coaches will talk about bending at the hips in order to hit low pitches. Um, that's really not something that um, Franco does very much. He stays very, very upright with his body. Um, and he just tips his shoulders to hit the low pitch. So um, your shoulders are kind of always going to work like a tilt-a-whirl. If it kind of brings you back to like the days when you were like at the fair as a kid. Um, tilt-a-whirl is that ride that you go on that just kind of changes planes all the time as you're spinning around. That's kind of the way that your shoulders are going to work. And you'll notice on this pitch, his shoulders kind of work a little bit closer to like a Ferris wheel than to a um, merry-go-round. But your belt buckle, the, the plane of your belt buckle, if you're doing this right, if you're not bending at your hips, is pretty much always going to be parallel to the ground. Where your shoulders, you can see his in the beginning here, are pretty parallel to the ground. But the minute he sees and realizes that he's getting a low pitch, look at how he takes that shoulder down, but his belt buckle is still parallel. So he's able to change planes really, really well on his shoulder while still standing upright. But his belt is still level. So he's not hunching in. If he hunched in and kind of pointed his belly button more down towards the ground, that belt buckle plane would change. Whereas that's not really what he's doing here. So a lot of awesome things that Franco does in his swing. And it's easy to see why he was able to play until he was like 50. Um, and no pleasure. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or uh, shoot me an email.